Welcome back, everyone. She first appeared on Good Things Utah when she was just five years old, and now she's going into ninth grade this month. Back on the show, child author Marianne Jensen is here to promote another new book. Marianne, we are so happy to have you. I am so excited to be back. We love when you stop by to visit us, and I love that the book today is called S'mores. Yesterday was National S'mores Day. We have s'mores in the kitchen. This is just perfect timing. <laughs> I know. I had no idea that yesterday was National S'mores Day until, like, super late at night, and then we're here, and she's making s'mores in the kitchen. Like, everything's just coming together. Well, Marianne, how many books do you have out right now? This book, my new one, is the fourth in my series, but it's my fifth overall. I am so proud of you and impressed by you every time you stop by. <laughs> Tell us what S'mores is all about. What's the message? Well, each book in my series is in a different character's perspective. This one follows Janessa. And in this book, Janessa and the Sundance Squad, they have plans for the perfect summer until the history of the town rips them apart. You say that this is all about standing up for what you believe in, no matter what other people mm -hmm. have to say. Talk a little bit about that. Yes. So standing up for what you believe in is really, really hard. In this book, Janessa is trying to prove to the mayor of the town that he should not rip down the gazebo because she's connected to the gazebo because of her ancestors. So she tries idea after idea after idea, and they all keep failing. But she is persistent and continues to try different things, so that way she can prove to the mayor that the gazebo needs to stay. And I really feel like Janessa got her persistence from me, because when I started this book, all I had was the title, S'mores, and I originally thought I was going to write this story about a different character. Her name's Sabrina. I was thinking, okay, I'm going to write this book about, like, a camp out. And so I wrote 25 first chapters, and I didn't really like any of them. And the Sundance Squad in my head was like, uh, no, that's not quite right. Like, try it again. So then I'm like, okay, Sabrina, you're not really working for me. Let's try Janessa. So I wrote nine first chapters. All, they all could go different ways, but still, I didn't feel like any of them were right. But when I finally landed on this 10th one, I knew that this was a story that I needed to tell. That's so interesting, the process that you go through. And you said the first and second time, it just wasn't the right fit. It just didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. Where do you get your inspiration? Is it just by writing? And then, I mean, 25 chapters, you're almost thinking, I don't want to turn back now, but sometimes <laughs> you have to pivot, right? Yes. I started writing the Sundance Spring series when I was 12 and a half. So since I've been writing about these characters for such a long time, they've started to feel like real friends to me. So I just like to see where my imagination takes them. I love how you explained your process because what you're saying is that you really know at this point how to trust your instincts. And I think that is so cool to be that in tune at your age. Thank so you. w another thing that I really like is that you're writing about these young girls while you are a young girl yourself going through, figuring things out, getting to know who you are. How does that relate to the girls in the series? I really put a lot of myself into who these characters are. And I just try to channel my inner self and just push that into who the characters become. So, do you have um, a number, like how many you want in the series, or do you just want to keep writing until you run out of ideas, which I maybe <laughs> may not be ever? Well, there's seven main girls in this series, so since each is in a different character's pers perspective, I'm planning on seven books. What do friends and family say after they read your books? What's the feedback that they give you? My grandma actually just finished this one, and like she she loved it I just love hearing everybody's opinions and like what they like what they don't like and everybody that I talk to they're just so they're so nice and they just want me to succeed and they just want me to keep writing I love it what um, what age group are we talking about who is this book or in the series for they're great for elementary schoolers first second grade up and you are going to be a part of Craft Lake City coming up this weekend on Kids Row. Have you done this before? How's it going to work? Yes, I was at Kids Row last year as well as the year before. And so I will be selling my books from 
12 to 4 on Saturday at Craft Lake City. That is at the Utah State Fair Park. And if you come stop by and buy a book, I can personally sign it for you. What if you want all the series? Do you, will you have that available too? I will have all of my books available. Yes. Oh, go and visit Mary Ann at Craft Lake City this week. And you can also hop online on her website, booksbymaryann.com, and make those purchases and follow along. I am so excited to see where your career goes from here. Now, as you're getting ready for high school, growing up, you'll be channeling that into the books and we'll be following along. Thank you. Thanks so much. Up next, producer Savvy is in the GTU kitchen today showing us how to make four ingredient s'mores bars. We will be back with that yummy goodness after this short break.